Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. In this video, let's discuss about IS456-2000. In the last part of this series, we have discussed till the side phase reinforcement that is class number 26.5.1.3. So in this video, let's continue with the explanation of other classes of IS456-2000. So without delay, let's begin now. Let's look into the class 26.5.1.4 transverse reinforcement in beams for shear and torsion. The trans Transverse reinforcement in beams shall be taken around the outermost tension and compression bars. In T-beam and I-beam, such reinforcement shall pass around longitudinal bars located close to the outer face of the flange. As we all know that beam is a horizontal member, so the longitudinal bars are provided in the axis of the beam that is in the horizontal direction. So these transverse reinforcement that is shear reinforcement, we can call it as a transverse reinforcement, stirrups or shear reinforcement. They are provided on the outer face of the flange. Let's look into the beam drawing. So this is the longitudinal section of the beam. So the main bars are provided along the longitudinal axis. Let's look into the cross section. So this is the cross section. So as we have seen in IS456-2000, this is the vertical reinforcement that is the stirrup. Stirrup reinforcement has to be provided close to the outer face of the flange. So the stirrups are provided in the vertical direction which is taken around the outermost tension and compression bar. As you can see, this is the tension bars and this is the compression bar. So stirrup is taken around the outermost tension and compression bars. Next, let's look into maximum spacing of shear reinforcement. The maximum spacing of shear reinforcement method along the axis of the member shall not exceed 0.75 D for vertical stirrups and D for inclined stirrups at 45 degree where D is the effective depth of the section. Usually we provide vertical stirrups in some cases if we provide inclined stirrups in that case the maximum spacing of shear reinforcement shall not exceed D. D is the effective depth of the section and if in case of vertical stirrups the spacing shall not exceed 0.75 D. In no case shall the spacing exceed 300 mm. So whether it is a vertical stirrup or inclined stirrups the spacing shall not exceed 300 Amount. 300 is the maximum spacing of stirrups which we need to provide. Let's discuss that in the drawing. Here we have the cross section of the beam. This is the shear reinforcement. As we have seen in the drawing, this is the shear reinforcement that is stirrups and this is the effective depth of the beam. As per IS456-2000, the maximum spacing of shear reinforcement shall not exceed 0.75 D. Here D is the effective depth of the beam. So what is this spacing? So you can see here these are the longitudinal bars as i told you in the beginning the longitudinal bars are provided in along the axis of the beam whereas the stirrups are provided perpendicular to the axis of the beam so the stirrups are provided here so the distance between stirrups spacing between stirrups shall not exceed 0.75 d here d is the effective depth the spacing is distance between these two stirrup this shall not exceed 0.75 d and in no case it shall exceed 300 mm. So the maximum spacing is limited to 300 mm only. Also it should not exceed 0.75 D. Next minimum shear reinforcement. Minimum shear reinforcement in the form of stirrup shall be provided such that ASV upon BSV is greater than 0.4 upon 0.87 FY. Here ASV is the total cross sectional area of stirrup legs effective in shear. SV is the stirrup spacing along the length of the member. B is the breadth of the beam or breadth of the web of flanged beam. And FY is the characteristic strength of stirrup reinforcement in Newton per millimeter square which shall not be taken greater than 415 Newton per millimeter square. So here it is clearly given as the stirrup reinforcement steel grade shall not be taken greater than 415 Newton per millimeter square. Whereas we use higher grade of steel like 500 uh, Newton per millimeter square or 550 Newton per millimeter square for the main bars or longitudinal bars. But for the shear reinforcement, the grade of steel shall not be greater than 415 Newton per millimeter square where the maximum shear stress calculated is less than half the permissible value and in members of minor structural importance such as 
lintels this provision need not be complied with so this this has to be applied where the maximum shear stress calculated is less than half the permissible value while calculating the shear reinforcement we calculate the maximum shear stress if that is less than the half of the permissible value and also when the members of minor structural importance such as lintels so this provisions need not be used next let's look into the minimum reinforcement class number 26.5.2.1 the mild steel reinforcement in either direction in slab shall not be less than 0.15% of the total cross sectional area however this value can be reduced to 0.12% when high strength deformed bars or welded wire fabrics are used so when we use fe250 that is mild steel bar that time the percentage of reinforcement for slab shall be 0.15 percentage and if we use high strength deformed bar if we 415 or if we 500 we need to use the reinforcement percentage as 0.12 percentage of the total cross sectional area for slab reinforcement next one is maximum diameter the diameter of reinforcing bar shall not exceed one eighth of the total thickness of the slab so how do we choose the dia of the reinforcement diameter of the reinforced bar for slabs that shall not exceed one eighth of the total thickness of the slab for example let's consider the thickness of the slab as 150 mm so one eighth of 150 mm we need to consider one eighth of 150 so 1/8 of 150 is 18.75 mm that means for thickness of 150 mm slab dia of the reinforcement bar shall not exceed above this but we don't have 18 mm dia bar practically so let's uh, restrict this one to 16 mm so in this case the dia of the bar shall not exceed 16 mm so below 16 mm dia bar only we need to use for the thickness of 150 mm slab next columns longitudinal reinforcement class number 26.5.3.1 the cross sectional area of the longitudinal reinforcement shall not less than 0.8% nor more than 6% of the gross cross sectional area of the column so the minimum reinforcement percentage shall be 0.8% and maximum reinforcement shall be 6% for column here in the note they have mentioned that the use of 6% reinforcement may involve practical difficulties in placing and compacting of concrete if we use 6% of reinforcement the and the space to place the concrete will be very less and that create many practical difficulties like compacting of concrete and placing of concrete hence the lower percentage is recommended so where bars from the columns below have to be lapped with those in the column under consideration the percentage of steel shall usually not exceed 4 percentage so in order to avoid this kind of practical difficulties IS 456-2000 has restricted the maximum percentage of steel for columns is 4 percentage so the percentage of steel shall not exceed 4 percentage in any column that has larger cross sectional area than that required to support the load the minimum percentage of steel shall be based upon the area of concrete required to resist the direct stress and not upon the actual area so if the column is having the larger cross sectional area than the required to support the load in that case the minimum percentage of steel shall be based upon the area of concrete required to resist the direct stress so whatever the area is required area of concrete is required to resist the direct stress the percentage of steel is depend on the area required it is not depend upon the actual area that is the larger cross sectional area of the column the minimum number of longitudinal bars provided in a column shall be 4 in rectangular and 6 in circular columns so this is the minimum number of bars which has to be provided in a columns in rectangular column minimum number of 4 number bars has to be provided whereas in circular column 6 number of bars has to be provided the bar shall not be less than 12 mm in diameter so the minimum diameter of bar for column is 12 mm a reinforced concrete column having helical reinforcement shall have at least 6 bars of longitudinal reinforcement within the helical reinforcement 
reinforcement as we have discussed before if it is a circular column the minimum bars has to be 6 spacing of longitudinal bars measured along the periphery of the column shall not exceed 300 mm in case of pedestal in which the longitudinal reinforcement is not taken into account in strength calculation nominal reinforcement not less than 0.1% of the cross sectional area shall be provided here in the note it is mentioned as pedestal is a compression member the effective length of which does not exceed 3 times the lat least lateral dimension if you want to know more details about pedestal what is pedestal and what is column what is the difference between pedestal and column i have uploaded one video about what is pedestal in the column column playlist i'll provide you the link in the description box if you want you can check that one so friends let's end up this video here in the next part of this series let's continue with the transverse reinforcement i hope you all like this video please do comment in the comment box your comments are always welcome and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos thank you for watching